Because Star Citizen has the ambition to be as immersive as possible, a key component of that experience is that both law-abiding and less than law-abiding gameplay choices both contribute to making the universe feel more real for players. But it also creates a challenge to overcome, in that sometimes those choices will impact other players, and the game needs to be fun for everyone. Despite what some might have you believe, Star Citizen isn't Tarkov in space, it's not a PvP only game, but equally it's not a happy utopia simulator either. Venturing out in Star Citizen will be a somewhat risky business, with players determining what level of risk they want to take by where they choose to go. So by having consequences to actions, Star Citizen aims to address the balance. I'm Farrister, and my YouTube channel has lots of Star Citizen videos ranging from guides to reviews, so if this kind of video sounds interesting to you, well, you might want to check out a few more or even subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. And if you're thinking, Barrister, the footage of Clesher is on point, but to get there you have to break the law and I thought this was a wholesome, law-abiding channel. Fear not, this was done for research purposes only in a way that hurt the least number of people. To get to Clesher, I committed a parking violation. And I've served my time for that and I'm deeply sorry. So before we dive in, it's important to distinguish between game rules and in-game laws. The game rules are the meta stuff, like the rules the game has against stream sniping, pad ramming or not using cheating software. Those out of game rules have out of game consequences, meaning people who don't abide by the rules of the game ultimately face the risk of being kicked out of it. But the in-game rules and laws, things like not stealing a ship that doesn't belong to you, well, there's an element of discouraging those behaviours because if it happens all the time, it's a pretty crappy experience. But also there's an element that says that the risk of those things happening, from time to time, makes this an interesting place to be. So it might be against the in-game law to do so, and if a player chooses to do it, they might face in-game consequences but it's something that players can choose to do. And that's a good thing. Even for the most peaceful player, it introduces choices and consequences, and as Star Citizen scales up, makes it more realistic. What I mean by that is that law breaking is, sadly, a realistic part of the human condition. Moreover, in-game it means that players have a broader choice of how they want to play the game. Sure, you could make your name as an upstanding citizen, but you could also choose to make your name as the Dread Pirate Roberts. And those choices are interesting, as long as they also carry consequences. And it's something I've said before, but the biggest challenge in resolving that dichotomy right now in Star Citizen is that players are all far too close together for those choices or consequences to be meaningful. Those players who want to fly around in safe, patrolled space, as well as those players who want to live in the cosmic equivalent of the Wild West, are all flying around the Stanton system. Or, to put it another way, Stanton is both the starter zone and the endgame combat PvP arena, two places that many game designers would not choose to put together. And having everything in one system, to some extent, removes the element of choice that players can make about the level of risk they want to take. To take a real analogy, if you just bought a fancy Rolex watch and are taking it home, you probably feel less at risk if you choose a route that takes you past the local police station during daytime than if you decide to go home via a back alley at night. The first option isn't completely safe, but it's probably more safe, and there are probably more consequences for anybody who wants to interfere with you and your shiny new watch. And that's what's missing in Star Citizen right now. Some players think that Stanton is the back alley. Other players think it's right by the police station. And there aren't enough different places at the moment that both can obviously exist. In the long term, more locations offer a solution to this challenge. Yes, you can go out and mine or trade in the less patrolled systems, and you can probably make more profit doing that, but the risk also increases. 
Or if you want to play it safe, you can trade in the highly patrolled systems and accept that your profits are reduced, but so is the risk. Although note, I say reduce rather than eliminated entirely. But here's the kicker for crime oriented players. There also need to be consequences to the actions of said players. If law abiding players are making choices about risk and reward, so should non law abiding players, which is where the in game criminal justice system comes in. The first time you visit Clasher Rehabilitation is pretty interesting, not just for having a look around, but also working out what you have to do to get through one of the different methods of getting out. But very quickly, it can get quite stale and repetitive, and so many people will opt for a near instant release from fixing the oxygen contraption or taking the short, albeit complicated, walk to break out and having somebody pick them up, or simply logging off and letting the timer work itself out for the next time they play. And therein lies the problem that there's a potential mismatch of consequence for the harm caused by the player and the sentence held. For example, for a minor parking violation, there's a large amount of inconvenience that goes alongside that. It feels that the consequence is far more severe than the action. Equally, if a player destroys a cargo ship full of quantanium that has taken days to mine, they also get the same Clasher experience, and maybe have half an hour out of their time for their troubles, if they're even caught, versus days and days that it took the miner to acquire that. And whilst I'm sure it runs the risk of heavy downvoting on this video by some people who would rather not take responsibility for their choices, I'd suggest that the consequences for the actions of criminal players should align to the impact those actions have on law abiding players. That's not to say those actions should be impossible, but by introducing more of a risk reward element on both sides of that spectrum, it means that player choice and the consequences of those choices have a much bigger part to play. Because all of those choices are what makes the universe of Star Citizen varied and interesting. But it's also just a game, and it should be fun for everyone. After all, there's certainly room for everyone in the expanding Star Citizen universe. But I've gone on for a while, and so it's only right to see what you think about this topic. These are just my opinions, and I'm always interested to hear about other perspectives. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, I'm sure there may be some spicy takes. If you enjoyed this video, or want to save my sanity from the dislike bomb that may follow because I offhand mentioned PvP, feel free to hit that like button, and if you enjoy these thought pieces, you might press subscribe to be notified of future videos. Otherwise, and as ever, thank you for watching. What are you in for? I stole a cutlass. What are you in for? I destroyed an advocacy ship. What are you in for? I parked on the grass.